what's up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of Inside the Vinyl. I'm your host, Tim Bianconi. If you would, go ahead and like, comment, share, and subscribe to my channel below. That would be appreciated. If you could also hit that notification bell so you could be notified when we release new content, that would be appreciated also. So, I'm going to dip back into my live album series again. And this will be at least the eighth time that I've done a video specifically on KISS. Maybe ninth time overall if you count the live footage I have up out there of this band. Uh, but this time, I'm going to discuss their fourth live album. Ironically, not titled Kiss Alive 4. Uh, but in this case, we are going to talk about the 1996 release, Kiss MTV Unplugged. Uh, so this was released on March 12, 1996. It was recorded August 9, 1995 in New York. Uh, produced by Alex Coletti, who I think is the MTV Unplugged producer, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it came out on the Mercury label. It charted as high as number 15 on the Billboard charts and has been certified gold for shipments of over 500,000. I don't know if it's sold that many. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at this album. All right, so this is the 2014 uh, Mercury re reissue that came out at the same time that the rest of their catalog was reissued on vinyl. Uh, and this might have been issued for the first time. I'm not sure they actually issued a vinyl of this in 96, but here is the front cover of MTV Unplugged. Here is the back cover with random pictures of the band, uh, as well as a track listing. And for those who don't know, this actually, this album, we'll get more into this in a second, but this is the actual album that got the ball rolling on the four original members getting back together and touring in the mid to late 90s. Uh, so again, that's why there's pictures of like six different band members amongst others on the back of this record. So again, front cover, back cover. All right, so let's go ahead and open up the gatefold and see what we have here. Oh. Never mind. There is no gatefold. All right, so let's go ahead and pull everything out of the inside of the record here. Okay. So this is a two-record set. Um, so let's go ahead and, you know, we'll just go ahead and take a look at the record. It's got this anti-static uh, inner sleeves in here, which is kind of cool, which is interesting because I did the Alive 3 record last time, and that just had a standard white sleeve in the middle, but these came with these nice anti-static sleeves. Uh, so let's go ahead and pull this record out, 180 gram. And in, in contrast to Alive 3, which had the Mercury label in the middle, this actually has a very specific, <clears throat> excuse me, as I burp, you know, on my show here, uh, has a very specific uh, sticker in the middle for KISS MTV Unplugged. So it's got that with the track listing. Uh, it's got the same thing on the other side. Uh, the second record is the same, so I won't bother going, you know, and opening it up uh, so you can see it. There it is, in case you were wondering. All right, so, and the last thing that's in the inside of this record, which I thought was really cool, uh, was, is a poster of a collage, and I don't even know if I can even get all this on my, you know, on my small uh, phone screen here, but we'll, we'll give it a shot. If I can even get it open to... Huh. All right. So there it is, a collage of everything KISS MTV Unplugged. Uh, so hopefully I've got that on the screen there. If not, maybe I can see if I can download it and put a version of that up on the screen so you can see it. Uh, but yeah, really cool, really cool. You know, and definitely kind of goes back to, you know, old school Kiss albums in the 70s where they would put posters and toys and all sorts of random shit in their albums and stuff. You know, so it's kind of cool that, you know, and when they re when they reissued these in, in, in the, uh, you know, in 2014, you know, that something like this you know, has like, you know, a new feature that makes it worth having. All right. All right. I may have to edit this piece out as I try to piece my record right together. Uh, but just bear with me for a moment. And then we will discuss KISS MTV Unplugged. All right. All right. Let's see if I get my record right together here. All right, cool. There, we got it back together. All right, KISS, MTV Unplugged. All right, so let's talk about this album. Uh, the reviews for this album were generally positive. Uh, the, the, I mean, the performances on here, most people, you know, think, you know, very high energy. Some people question the validity of the Unplugged piece, you know, that at times it sounds very electric. But, you know, it's, whoa. You know, these are, you know, you know, it, it's KISS, so it's acoustic, but it's going to be, you know, very electric acoustic. Uh, Bruce and Eric, Bruce Kulik on guitar, Eric Singer on drums. Uh, you know, both, you know, give amazing performances, uh, you know, along with Paul and Gene. 
Uh, they played, you know, some really, you know, some some songs that you normally wouldn't hear them play live that maybe lend themselves better to an unplugged setting rather than a normal live setting. You know, not every song on here, you know, there's there's plenty of hits, but, you know, at least half the album is made up of deeper album tracks, uh, which I thought was really cool. Uh, so, like I said, uh, this album was the catalyst uh, for what eventually became the original members getting back together and touring in 96 and, and on for a while. Uh, but this was the first time that Ace and Peter had appeared on a Kiss album since 1980 and had appeared with the band. Uh, at least all four of them together since 1980. Ace was around until 82, but all four members the first time they appeared together since 1980. Uh, so, and it's kind of neat, you know, because the original band comes out and plays the first, I don't know, uh, 12, 13 songs um, or so. And then the original band comes on stage and the original four members play a couple of songs and then the other, and then Bruce and Eric come back and all six uh, play two tracks together to close out the album. So, you know, let's uh, yeah. So let's let's talk about some of the stuff on this album. I mean, like I said, there's a lot of deeper tracks on here, uh, which I think the MTV Unplugged gave them the opportunity to pursue. So it starts off with a song called "Coming Home" or "Coming Home," uh, which is you know definitely an album track from from Hotter Than Hell, a deep album track. Then it goes into "Plaster Caster," which kind of which. It's a song about those two ladies in the 70s that made cast of every rock star's penis. Ironically, had never actually done one of, of anybody in Kiss's penis, but, you know, whatever. They wrote a song about it anyway. Then another deep track from Hotter Than Hell, Going Blind, which is cool. Uh, then they go into Do You Love Me from Destroyer, Side 2, Domino from Revenge, Sure Know Something from Dynasty, A World Without Heroes from The Elder. And to my knowledge, that may be one of the first times uh, that that track had ever been played live since The Elder came out. Uh, Rock Bottom from Dress to Kill. See You Tonight from Rock and Roll Over and Gene Solo Record. Actually, no, I'm sorry. That's just from Gene Solo Record. Sorry. Um, and then they go into an absolutely beautiful version of I Still Love You. And if you can listen to this version of that song and not think Paul Stanley is one of the best singers in rock history you're an idiot i'm sorry that's just my opinion but whatever then they go into every time i look at you uh, another song off revenge uh and then at that point is when the original band comes out they do 2000 man from dynasty and then they do a really cool acoustic version of beth uh which is really cool then the original you know then all then uh, bruce and eric come back out all six members do nothing to lose and they close out with rock and roll all night and the cool thing about this album or at least th this this issue is that they did include uh, a track off Hotter Than Hell that was left off the original CD and cassette release, uh, but was on their box set and is on this release. And it's a version of a song uh, called Got to Choose, uh, originally on Hotter Than Hell. Now, I don't know why maybe they didn't put this extra song maybe back in the order it was on, because it was on the DVD, but it just wasn't on the CD and cassette release. So I don't know why, because it's a really, really cool version, probably my favorite version of that song. Um, you know, who knows, you know, why they do things. Um, but again, yeah, so, you know, in my opinion, and again, like I said, I, I know this was the beginning of the reunion tour and all that came with that, but at the same time, I feel like this was a very missed opportunity for Kiss because the MTV Unplugged, their episode was the highest rated of all the Unplugged episodes from, from what I understand. And they released the album, what, seven, eight months later and really just kind of released it as an afterthought. Like literally the, the, the day it came out, like a couple of days before is when they came out in the Grammys in all makeup with the four original guys and they came out with Tupac at the Grammys. So it's like they put this out, but it was kind of like, oh, well, well, here's this, you know, but here's this with Bruce and Eric, but we're, we're doing this with AC Peter, you know, kind of thing. Um, and I think it was a missed opportunity because I think if they'd have gotten it out sooner, uh, you know, when the actual Unplugged show was fresh on people's minds off MTV, it could have sold better. And then on top of that, I don't know why they feel the need to re, you know, when, when they release songs off like a live album or a compilation, it always seems like it's just a re-release of Rock and Roll and Night or whatever. And it's like, did we really need another version of that? Or could you have released a song off this album that had never been a single, but was just absolutely stunning from this record and had a hit with it? Like... There's a song called Every Time I Look at You from Revenge. And when they tried to release it as a single off Revenge, the record label crapped all over it and wouldn't support it. Well, you had another opportunity with this album to release what I think is an even better version of that album, or a better version of that song on this Unplugged album than the original because it has an orchestra and everything else. I think you had a golden opportunity 
to have a hit with that song or even maybe I Still Love You but I think Every Time I Look At You would have been a huge hit or could have been had that been the single off this album instead of just rehashing Rock and Roll One Night but that's just my opinion uh, again I'm no marketing guy and obviously Kiss has you know, been around forever and made a dump load of money so what do I know that's just my opinion you know take it for what it is but again MTV Unplugged the most rocking un- of, of all the Unplugged. Uh, you know, it has its pretty moments and its slow moments and its mellow moments, but, you know, this definitely rocks for sure. And they did it in pure kiss fashion with confetti and, you know, they managed, they even managed to blow shit up, you know, on an Unplugged show. So check it out, MTV Unplugged. I don't think you'll be disappointed. You know, another great, co- you know, another great addition to the Kiss Live, uh, live sets. Um, so there you go. <laughs> That's all I've got this time. Uh, again, like, comment, share, and subscribe to my channel below. Hit that notification bell. I've got some other things on my channel. I've got the rest of my Inside the Vinyl series where we talk about live albums. Uh, we also talk about albums that I think are lost classics. Uh, I've got my Unboxing the Vinyl series where we open up new albums, reissues, box sets, anniversary editions, whatever. Sometimes we even open up CD box sets like the ones you see behind me. Uh, I've got some live footage from some festivals. Welcome to Rockville. Uh, exit 111 Uh, i've got some kiss footage amongst other things and last but not least if you like disc golf i've got some mediocre disc golf videos starring some mediocre disc golf players myself included i know that's a lot of different things on one channel i'm sure i'm a you know a branding consultant's nightmare but anyway like comment share and subscribe hit that notification bell and we'll see you next time peace out (laughs) there you go boy